Good morning. It is roofing day for Daisy's shed. So it's back to Home Depot we go. I'm gonna get the metal to put on. I will probably have to build some kind of framing here in the back for the back overhang because I think it's probably about two feet. Plus, I'm gonna want a rain gutter on there and it will need wood to attach to. Bella's still wondering why that dog is barking. All right, we're back from Lowe's and I really, really, really need to get a truck or a trailer because this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> 12 feet. All right, I've got all these unloaded, which was no small feat. There's 13 of them, 12 feet long and surprisingly heavy. So you can only carry about two at a time. Plus they're awkward because they bend. I'm just gonna do it the same way I did the roof on the patio cover and the back of the cottage. So that means using these screws that have those little rubber gaskets. So when you screw them down, it squeezes that rubber gasket uh, against the metal and keeps the water out and then you just screw that on with this little hex screwy thingy let's get to work Okay, I'm half done and we've got shade, shade. So I've gotten a lot of accolades in the comments about my carpentry skills. And while I appreciate it, and while I'm okay, I'm decent, nobody would ever hire me. Or if they hired me, it would be at a deeply discounted rate because if you look close, you're gonna notice this ain't perfect. It's not as noticeable until you see, you put this metal up there that has straight lines through it, and then you can see how the rest of this is not straight. Take a look at the angle here. Ideally, this piece of wood would be running parallel to those stripes in the metal. The reason for this starts at the very beginning when I put the posts in. I did not know the math or the formula or whatever it is to make sure that this frame was perfectly straight. So because of that, this wall cheats in a little bit and that wall over there cheats out a little bit. But for the most part, you're not gonna notice it. It doesn't bother me enough to take the whole thing down and change it. good there's still little barcode tags all over it but I'll take care of that another time I just noticed from this vantage point you can see all three structures that I've built in the last two years the newest one the oldest one my favorite one. I always feel like I haven't done a lot for the amount of time I've been here, but kind of sitting here just looking across and then remembering the vegetable garden and all the terraces that I did over on the other side. I've done a lot. There's Bella way over there. Bella, what are you doing? It's hard to believe that Less than a week ago, there was nothing here. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that's a record. That was, that went pretty quick. 
But that, y'all know that was a long time coming. <laughs> I am going to go in, take a shower, get ready. We're going to take Noah to youth group, and then Emily and I are going to go out and have some fun on our own. Probably no Home Depot trip this time. I've been there enough over, I've been there like almost every day for the past five days. I went twice today. Okay, almost going in. I just happened to be passing by this fig tree and I've noticed that it's got a couple branches that can be trained into this espalier form. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I've already got the guide wires here. So I'm gonna pull this one down onto the lowest wire and just tie it in with some green tape. Probably the only one that's really long enough to do. This one's getting there where I can tie it into this second wire here, but I'm gonna wait on that. So it looks a little funny right now, but the leaves will turn toward the sun in the next couple days and it'll look fine. Well, it'll still look weird because it's just one leg kind of off to the side, but eventually I want it to cover this wall. All right, now I'm going in. See you tomorrow. The next day, and I took a lazy morning this morning I slept funny last night and I've got this catch in my neck. Or maybe it was from all the lifting and bending and twisting yesterday. Whatever the reason, I'm really happy with how the roof came out on the shed. And I'm just happy with the overall process. I can't believe, you know, a week ago there was nothing here. But that came at a cost. That was five or six straight days of almost all day building. And I don't have it in me for a seventh day. So today, I'm going to do some relaxation with some gardening. A few weeks back, I took some cuttings from this geranium right here. Pelargonium really is what they're called. but And those cuttings have rooted, and they've rooted well. The roots are actually coming out the bottom of the container. So uh, that means it's time to plant them. Here they are. Some didn't take. Most did. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, about sixteen or seventeen plants. They're still roofing next door. Those plants are gonna go here under the espalier trees. I'm just gonna get some compost, fill in this area, and start planting, and then I'll put drip in the area as well. Finally, I will finally not have to water these trees by hand anymore. Right, they're planted and I've got the drip hooked up. Look how cool that is. Look at his tail. I forget what it's called, I'll put it on the screen. So I hooked into the drip coming out of the house, for now at least. Comes down here, around the corner, and then all the way down the bed. Now I used regular drippers on the geraniums or pelargoniums, and I used a shrubbler on the trees. The shrublers cover a wider area, and so of course, roots of trees are gonna go a little bit wider. I also put a shrubler on this climbing rose right here. This is Don Juan. Great fragrance. And it needs to be trimmed back. It needs to be cut a little bit and trained. Uh, the next job is taking this away. 
and then linking up the gravel to this path and this whole area here. It's really nice to have this done though. Looks good. So I'm kind of trying to figure out how I'm gonna do the hay storage area. I think I'm gonna run it all the way along this back wall. It's gonna be a long box. That's basically the dimensions of a bale of hay. And then it'll have a slanted roof on top that will open up to get inside of it. Now there's gonna be a rain gutter up here on this roof because otherwise we're gonna have a flooding here. And one thing I wanna show you, this soil here on this drop off is pretty loose because it's all fill dirt. And so I was looking up different options to put here. They have like blankets or mats that they roll out and they're made of like a, a jute or, or even some straw ones. Um, they last maybe six months to a year, probably longer here because we have a dry climate, but they're to help keep runoff from taking the soil. Um, so that was one option, but I decided I would try a different option. There is a uh, California native prairie grass mix that you can sow on a hillside and it grows really fast. It's obviously compatible with our climate here. Um, they're all natives and it's a mixture of grasses that have deep, deep root systems, sometimes rhizomatic root systems. And so what that does is it grows very fast, those roots go deep, and it holds the soil in place so that erosion won't happen. So I'm gonna kind of round that top off so it's not such a straight drop off, um, but I'm gonna sow that grass all along that bank there. You can see the, the angle I'm working with. And it's supposed to be for up to 45 degree angles, so that looks like about 45 degrees to me. So I already ordered it because I want it to get here, I wanna get it sown and get it growing before the winter rains. I had also mentioned changing the latch on this gate that I put in, and I, I went ahead and did that. So it's just one of these kind, that way I can open it with one hand, close it, and I put the same one on this main gate as well. Now some of you had mentioned that I should have made that main gate wider for a tractor to get in here and handle the manure. Well, I don't have a tractor, so it's gonna be me and a shovel, or Noah and a shovel. And some of you were worried that that was not a big enough gate to get the cow through. Remember, she is a mini cow, so she is half the size of a regular cow. So she will fit through that gate easily. But I won't tell her you said that. And a few of you asked about predators in a couple of different ways. A couple of people thought that a predator might be able to be up here where Bella is and just jump over the fence. Well, truly, um, most predators that we have could jump over the fence from the ground level or just walk right through the, the space between but that's what bella's here for so i'm not super worried about predators we're going to have motion lights up on these trees so that if any predator came out here uh, just the light alone would scare them um, and then bella barking showing her teeth getting getting a little aggressive if she needed to um, that's gonna be enough to deter most predators. Most predators are looking for an easy meal. Um, and when Daisy's full grown, I mean, most predators aren't even gonna bother her anyway, but if they got crazy and decided to give it a try, Queen Bella's on the job. Right, Bella? Yeah. And one of you had a really good eye and noticed these two by fours were connected to the inside of these rails, except for one, this one. It goes from the inside to the outside. The reason being, I accidentally put this, this post too far back. And so if it would have gone on the inside like the rest, it would have angled in a lot. It's still angled in, but you can't notice it as much because it's on the outside. Good eye, that's very impressive. I've also made the decision that at least until Bella is older and more mature, knows how to handle herself she's going to be confined to the pasture area the reason for that is she is very destructive <laughs> she is constantly finding things and chewing them up and some have been a little bit questionable on the danger side she even pulled one of my outdoor lighting out of the ground and chewed it up 
Now she will be allowed to roam the rest of the property when I'm out here, which I gotta say is a lot. But when we're not here, when I'm not outside, she'll be in the pasture with Bella, which is probably a good thing in the beginning anyway to get them bonded. Now that is of course, once we acclimate them together and Daisy is, you know, okay with her. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that electric fencing from the opening there. Well, I'm not gonna take it from there, but I'm gonna add on to it. And it's gonna come in front of these trees and then around this way, you can see she's laying in the middle of all of her shrapnel. It's gonna go on this side of the avocado tree. Then it's gonna head down here. Not that she can get up here anyway, it's a four foot drop, but she might. And then it's just going to follow the outside of this curve. It'll go along this side of the corral and stop right here. At this point, I'm gonna end the electric fence. I'm gonna put a gate. And then from that gate to that chain link fence, I'm gonna just put T posts with woven wire. Um, nobody really sees it. It's just to keep Bella and Daisy from going in the rest of the property. I've also learned that dogs and gardens don't really mix, especially in the vegetable garden. She, she doesn't know what's a path and what's a bed. So I think for safety reasons for both her and the garden and my sanity, she'll have a half acre, her and Daisy to themselves, except for when I'm outside. So there is one piece of business that I'm hoping you might be able to help me with. We have been trying to think of a name for our property for like a year. And we felt we had plenty of time. Well, apparently when you bring home a, a cow, that cow has to be registered. And one of the things that they need to register it is the name of your farm or ranch or wherever. So we have a week from today. A week from today, she'll be here. Uh, we have a week from today to figure that name out. Now, we had thrown around some names in the beginning. And um, I kind of have imposter syndrome calling this a farm. Now, the future I see for us has changed in the two years we've been here. When I first moved here, my complete goal was a property full of gardens, themed gardens. But in the last year, year and a half, I've really been thinking a lot about livestock and really becoming a lot more self-sufficient here. With a cow and chickens, these flies are going... I'm looking into solutions for that too, especially before Daisy gets here. With a cow and chickens and rabbits and vegetable gardens, I'm, I'm good calling it a homestead now. I always, I, I felt like an imposter when we first moved here calling it that. But I also have to name it something that will last and we can grow into. And so I'm thinking farm is a good choice. I'll feel like an imposter for a while, but getting more property is not beyond the realm of possibility here, especially in the next couple of years. Uh, whether it be adjacent to this property or you know up and down our road here, there's lots of properties. And it would basically be a property, you know, an unimproved property. You know, it doesn't need to have a house on it. It can just be a property. Water would be nice. So I'm okay with farm in the name, even though I will feel a little weird about it for the first year or two. So my initial thought was naming it something that kind of incorporated all of the theming that we had going on here. But then I thought, well, that's pigeonholing us. I don't know. And th so then I thought there's a, there's a street name that I saw called Sky Ridge. And because we have a huge mountain ridge right out there, and lots of sky. I thought that would be cool. Sky Ridge. And we could call it, depending on what we were doing, the gardens at Sky Ridge, the farm at Sky Ridge. So that's the first choice. Let me know what you think of that. Then we were thinking about, again, all of the theming and especially the cottage. And we were thinking about something, you know, fairy tale or I didn't really like fairy tale farm, but I did like storybook farm but i looked online and there's actually a couple of those one is in california so if we ever wanted to go further with that name and incorporate or anything like that we would we may run into some problems 
So then I thought, okay, well, we live in this nice valley here. We could have Storybook Valley Farm. That's an option. To me, even though Sleepy Hollow was always a scary story, I liked the name of the town. For some reason, I wanted to live there. And I looked up what hollow actually means, and it means a, a valley with a waterway through it. And we've got that here. So it could be Fairy Tale Hollow Farm or Fairy Tale Hollow without the farm. Let me know if you like any of those and feel free to put other ones down below in the description because I'd love all of your input. This is someplace you guys hang out a lot too, right? So uh, let's come up with something before next Thursday. So if you could help me with that, I appreciate it. As always, thanks again for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys on the next video.